Desertification is growing rapidly all around the world, however, the issue is notably worse in China. According to Chinese governmental officials, the country loses approximately 3,600 square kilometer of farms and grasslands to sands and deserts every year. However, a recent remote sensing study found out that the area of land being lost to deserts each year exceeds over 4 million hectares, 15,500 square miles. China is working to tackle the severe problem of deforestation by turning desert green. The nation had implemented a project in 1978 known as the Great Green Wall of China. It is expected to continue till 2050 and aims to plant approximately 88 million acres of forests around the Great Wall, stretching around 3,000 miles and as wide as 900 miles in a few areas. So far, over 66 billion trees have been planted. Among them, the Muas Desert is a typical example. The Muas Desert, one of China's four major deserts, covers an area of 42,200 square kilometers, which used to be completely devoid of trees and farmland. From 1959 onward, local people planted trees to curb the invasion by sandstorms, extending the green area 400 kilometers northward after years of effort. Today, the desert has vanished from the map as 93% of the land undergoing desertification has become green. Yes. With the unremitting efforts of the Chinese, it is the first desert in China that is about to disappear has appeared. Moreover, the sand and dust weather has been reduced from more than 20 days per year to less than 10 days. Most importantly, the desert area is still shrinking with an annual rate of 1.6%. If the trees planted by people over the years are connected at one meter intervals, the length is enough to circle the equator 54 times. So, what did the Chinese do to make the desert to disappear? Okay, that and more is exactly what we are going to talk about. Let's get started. First, let's take a look at the historical changes of the Muas Desert. The Muas Desert is also called the Ordo Sandy Land. In Mongolian, Muas means a place where no grass grows, but the Muas Desert is not a natural desert. In ancient times, its desert area was very small, most of which were oases. According to historical records, in about the 5th century AD, it was called the Pearl Outside the Great Wall. It was a paradise for nomads at that time, with abundant water and grass, and many Huns lived here. However, with the continuous increase of the population and the continuous wars for years, the phenomenon of soil erosion here has become more and more serious, the surface vegetation has become less and less, and the quicksand has become more and more. According to archaeological research data, 3,500 to 2,200 years ago, the Ordo's bronze culture appeared in the Muas Desert, which was mainly based on nomadic farming. And according to the measurement results such as the content of fossil carbon in the soil layer, it can be concluded that the soil condition of the Muas Desert was very good at that time. This situation continued until the Xinguan period of the Tang Dynasty. Since the middle of the Tang Dynasty, the Muas Desert began to embark on the road of desertification. In just a hundred years, the environment of this oasis, which was once lush with water and grass, continued to deteriorate. The reason for this is that in the fourth year of Xinguan period of Tang Dynasty, the Eastern Turks surrendered and settled here, causing serious damage to the grassland under the influence of long-term overgrazing. Since then, the Muas Desert has been expanding at a steady rate. After the founding of the People's Republic of China, the situation in the Muas Desert is still not optimistic. According to public data, the forest coverage rate was only 0.9%. So, what happened to the Muas Desert, and it became the first desert in China that is about to disappear? The governance of the Muas Desert actually started very early. In the 1960s, China put the project of transforming the desert on the agenda. In the past few decades, both the government and the people have contributed to the desertification control in their own way. Since the 1950s, the establishment of the Shanbei Sand Prevention and Afforestation Bureau marked the beginning of people's control of the Muas Desert. In the beginning, the main measures to control the Muas Desert were stabilization of sands and irrigation. At that time, the communication conditions were very poor, 
and the access roads were inconvenient, so sand control was extremely difficult. In 1959, the Yulin government implemented a policy of subsidies for sand control and established a state-run forest farm so that sand control was no longer limited to stabilization of sands and irrigation, but to mobilize people to plant trees together. In this way, a large number of farmers have been to this barren land with saplings and began to plant trees. Under the persistence of generations of sand control workers, the windbreak forest belt in the Muas Desert has been built and remarkable results have been achieved. During this period, people will not only plant trees, but also use grass squares to conserve water in some areas that have not yet achieved transformation. Now, when China looks back at the history of the gradual greening of the Muas Desert, it will be found that some things are actually 30% predestined, 70% earned, and victory can only belong to those who persistently tried. The 30% predestined mentioned here is the natural conditions of the Muas Desert. As we have said above, it was an oasis with rich water and grass in history, and it still preserves some natural lakes. Not only that, the groundwater level in the Muas Desert is also relatively high, which means that it is easier to plant trees. After all, if you dig a little deeper, the sand at the bottom is relatively moist. As for the 70% earned, it refers to people's dedication to the desertification control project. During the 60 years of sand control, countless unswerving people have emerged. Today's Muas Desert has not only become greener and greener, but also brought extremely high economic benefits to the local area. The double effect sand control and poverty control have been combined. Taking Yulin City as an example, after achieving certain results in sand control, the local area entered a stage of comprehensive development of ecological construction and established a property rights system for decertified land assets, allowing more enterprises to enter the field of sand control. At present, there are more than 50 sand control enterprises in Yulin, with a total operating area of more than 1 million mu. In addition, the local area also attaches great importance to scientific and technological governance. The local forestry department has been exploring how to scientifically control sand and find more suitable planting varieties. The chairman of the Shinmu City Ecological Protection and Construction Association mentioned that the initial sand control was very difficult, because there are still many unexpected factors in planting trees in the desert. In this case, he visited many scientific research institutes, hoping to get help. In the process, he understood that the key to planting trees in the desert is to retain water first, otherwise, no matter how much irrigation is applied, the saplings will be difficult to survive. Later, not only did the sand control succeed, but also the long-handled almond seeds from his sand control base went into space with the Chinese astronauts. So far, the Mu U.S. desert may become the first desert in China to disappear, all of which are inseparable from the efforts of the people. This also tells us that we must respect nature and learn to live in harmony with nature, otherwise we will pay more in the future. Well, thanks for listening. If you have any suggestions, just leave them in the comments section. We'll come back as soon as possible and check them, and then we'll give feedback. See you next time.